So we're going to be looking at Moses again. Who, who in here knows the big story about Moses delivering the people out of Egypt, the ten plagues, all that? That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about kind of some time before that when, when God calls Moses. So the idea tonight that we want to highlight is that God can use the useless. Now I'm kind of using that in parentheses because I don't think any of you are really useless, are you? Although sometimes I feel like I am. You ever felt like you are? Like I, I don't have any talent, I can't do it, I'm not skilled enough, whatever. So, uh, but God can use us even though we are imperfect, right? And so that's kind of the idea tonight. So first I'd like to show you this. Uh, this is how we're going to uh, approach this story, similar to how we did last week. We're going to set the stage. Next, we're going to look at God's call to Moses. God goes and asks Moses to go back to Egypt. Uh, and then we're going to look at Moses' response to God and God's provision. Now, that word provision there means God's meeting the need that Moses can't meet himself. So, in fact, someone uh, gave us provisions tonight in the form of food, right? We need food. They provided a provision. Does everybody kind of know what that word means? Uh, and then lastly, we're going to just talk about God's victory. So, setting the stage. You remember last week we talked about Moses' impatience that caused him to have to flee? Remember that? He had to like leave Egypt because Pharaoh was going to kill him. And we, we walked through that and learned some really important lessons about patience. So we're going to pick the story up after Moses left Egypt. He had to out of fear for his life. And then after he arrives where he's at. So we're just going to read some scriptures real quick, kind of set the stage. So here we go. Now there was a priest in Midian. He had seven daughters. They came and to draw water from a well, right? Verse 17, shepherds came and were driving these ladies away, not, not allowing them to get their water. But Moses stood up and he saved them and he watered their flock. So here Moses is still kind of this aggressive take charge kind of guy. He stepped in, took up for the ladies, and then provided water for them, which I think is really cool that Moses has that kind of attitude. Uh, and that'll be really important later when we see uh, a, a, a different side of Moses. So when the ladies came home, uh, look at it, uh, their dad says to them, how is it that you have come home so soon today? And they told the story. There was an Egyptian that saved us. So he said to his daughter, Then where is he? Why have you left the man? Call him that he may eat bread. Eat bread. So they went and got Moses. Moses comes back, hangs out for a long time with this guy, and this guy ends up giving one of his daughters over to Moses. So now we have Moses not in Egypt, but to, to, to the backside of the wilderness in Midian, I think it was. And now he's settling in and he has a wife. Now, many years go by. Check it out, verse 23. During those many days, the king of Egypt died, and the people of Israel groaned because of their slavery, and they cried out for help. Remember that? Uh, the Pharaoh was imposing heavy burdens on them, and that's part of why Moses reacted the way he did. Uh, over time, it got worse and worse and worse. And so, verse 25, God saw the people of Israel, and God understood and knew what was going on. Look at verse 24 real quick there. God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and with Jacob. Remember that story way back in the Old Testament? God made a promise to Abraham that his people would become a great nation. God remembered that. All right, still setting the stage. Uh, so we, we get a sense of where Moses is. He's living in Midian. He has a wife. Uh, the people of Israel are still getting heavy burdens put on them, and God wants to do something about it. So next thing. God's call of Moses. Who's heard this story? Burning bush, right? Everybody, everybody knows this, and you've probably heard it many times. Uh, he draws near, so Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. He had to take his sandals off. And then the Lord said, uh, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry because of their taskmasters. I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey to the place of the Canaanites. That's a weird phrase, isn't it? We, we don't speak that way. We don't go, man, Walmart's my favorite store because it's a store flowing with milk and honey. Uh, this, this is a cultural phrase that means it's a really good place to live. Lots of prosperity, right? 
Uh, anybody have their favorite place that they would say, yeah, that place flow, flows with milk and honey. So check it out. Let's look. Uh, now God says again in verse 9, And now, behold, the cry of the people, Israel has come to me, and I have also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppress them. Verse 10, God says to Moses, Come, I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Now get this. Time has went by. Early Moses, he would be ready to stand up. Where's my sword? God, let's get after it. I killed the Egyptian trying to do this. Some shepherds are bugging some ladies. I took care of them. Let's go do it. But now we're talking about a different guy, a guy that's had a change of mind, a change of heart. So now we're going to look at Moses' response and God's provision from Exodus chapter 3. This is the heart of the lesson. We'll go step by step. Check this one out. God says, Moses, I want to send you back. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the children out of Egypt? So we start seeing here humility, but we might even say kind of self-doubt, right? Moses is like, who am I to go do this? And God's response, God's provision. God said, I will be with you, and this shall be a sign for you that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. So God gives him a promise. Moses, you doubt yourself, but I'll promise you I'll be with you. So Moses' self-doubt is met with God's promise of help. And so I would say this. Sometimes when we are in those situations, God's desire is to come alongside and help us, right? He is our Heavenly Father that loves us. So He wants to help us. Next, let's look at it. Then Moses says to God, If I come to the people of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, they will ask me, What is His name? What should I say to them? So Moses is like, Okay, but if I do go, they're going to ask who sent me, what do I say? God also said to Moses, Say this to the people of Israel, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has sent me to you. So Moses, get it, uh, not knowing what to do, God gives him instruction. I'll tell you what to say. Tell him that I sent you. Next, check it out. Uh, now this is interesting. God says these words. Check it out. Verse 19. I know that the king of Egypt will not let you go unless compelled by a mighty hand. So God gives him another encouragement. So I will stretch out my hand and strike Egypt with all the wonders that I will do in it. And after that, he will let you go. And I will give this people favor in the sight of Egyptians. And when you go, when you leave, you shall not go empty. So God's again giving him a promise and encouragement. Have you ever needed some encouragement? Uh, in this case, Moses is like the task is too big. Was the Moses, was the task too big for Moses? It sure was, wasn't it? There's no way he could do it on his own. God's saying, I'll be with you, I'll help you. I'm going to be a bit transparent with you. Being a youth pastor, sometimes I feel that way. Man, I, I just can't. I can't do it all. You know, I can't. I just can't be everything to everybody. So I have to rely on God's help, right? Uh, God has to work in the hearts of teenagers and families, right? It's, it's, it's just that way. Uh, sometimes uh, we just can't do it on our own. We need help. What about you as a teenager, man? Making sense of relationships, dealing with friends, dealing with family stuff. God, I just can't handle it. I just need some help. Uh, that, that takes us back to that study we talked about several weeks ago that teenagers are like the most stressed people in America for a whole sorts of reasons. Well, I would encourage you to, uh, man, look to God uh, and ask help from him. So check it out. This is Moses again, self-doubt. But behold, uh, they will not believe me or listen to my voice, for they will say, the Lord did not appear to you. So Moses is giving God like every reason not to go back. God's response. God tells Moses to put his staff down on the ground. It turns into a, stake, uh, a snake. God says, reach and grab it. And then when he does, it turns back into a staff. And then remember the story. God tells Moses to put his hand in his coat. It comes out leprous. But then he sticks it back in. It turn, turns out whole. And then God said, you know, when you go back, if they don't believe that, you'll be able to take water out of the Nile, pour it on the ground, and it'll turn to blood. So God said here, 
those things, those signs, I will give you so that they may believe that the Lord, the God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has appeared to you. So God is going to equip, or equip <laughs> Moses with what he needs to convince the people. Now this is interesting. Uh, sometimes we feel compelled to do something uh, that would be in, in honor or glory to God, pleasing to God, and, and we really feel like we're unfit. Uh, I can think of uh, any, any endeavor we would try for the glory of God may be intimidating. That could be a mission trip. That could be sharing the gospel with a friend. That could be making a new friend. Uh, I think, though, if we would put forth effort, God would help us the same way he, would, he helped Moses here. God's saying, you take step one and I'll equip you to finish it. Does that kind of make sense? You know, step out in faith, I'll equip you to do the work. So next thing. Man, Moses, this guy's like a, a, a what do they call that? Uh, uh, what's the, the, the old Saturday Night Live skit uh, where the lady has like every negative thing in the world to say? I can't remember, I can't remember that one. Uh, Debbie the Downer. It's kind of like, uh, oh, it's a beautiful, sunshiny day. Yeah, but I bet it'll storm. You know, it's like every negative positive, she turns to a negative. But I feel like that's what Moses is doing. Look at it, verse 10. But Moses said to the Lord, O oh, my Lord, I am not eloquent, either in the past or since you have spoken to your servant. I am of slow speech and of tongue. So Moses is like, God, you got the wrong guy. They're not going to listen to me. I don't know what to say. And then God keeps convincing Moses with promises, encouragement, equipping. And now Moses is like, I, I, I can't speak plain. This one's really cool. Look at it. Then the Lord said unto him, Who has made man's mouth? Who makes him mute or deaf or seeing or blind? Is it not I, the Lord? God's saying, I have control of this. I made you how you are. God controls how people speak, how they're created, what their gifts are. Look at verse 12. Now therefore go, and I will be with your mouth, and I will teach you what you will speak. Again, Moses' shortcoming is supplemented or filled up with God's help and God's promise. Isn't that cool? Verse 13, but he said, Oh my Lord, please send someone else. <laughs> Moses at this point, I, I don't want to do it. Send somebody else, God. Check it out, verse 14. Then the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses, meaning it built up, it's, it's, it's starting to happen. And he said, Is there not Aaron, your brother, the Levite, which was a priest? I know that he can speak well. He shall speak for you to the people. This is huge. Notice what God's doing here. Okay, Moses, you're right. So I'm going to actually give someone to help you. And this is what I say. When life gets tough and we don't know what to do, God will help us make sense of it. When we can't overcome things, God will help us. And this is really awesome. Sometimes when we can't do it alone, God will provide those special people we need. Does that make sense? Man, sometimes God will give us those special friends, parents, teachers, mentors, coaches. God wants to bring others in our life to help us make it through. That's really cool. That's encouraging. Uh, man, the challenges we've faced here over the last several months uh, in the church, there's been some, thankfully, some good people come alongside us. And then I've seen that happen with others as people have struggled. Uh, God's brought good good help through through people to them. So, everybody know the, how this story finishes? Uh, check it out. Moses and Aaron went and gathered together all the elders of the people of Israel. Aaron spoke all the words that the Lord had spoken to Moses, and he did the signs. Remember, we talked about those in the sight of the people. And check it out. The people believed, and when they heard that the Lord had visited the people of Israel and that he had seen their affliction, they bowed down their heads and they worshipped. So Moses had success when he went back. God provided the help. God told him what to speak. God equipped them with those miracles. Uh, God gave Moses help in, in the form of Aaron. So isn't that cool that it worked out? Moses goes from being a self-doubting, pessimistic guy that believes it'll never work out to a guy that obeys and God helps him out. And then we know the rest of the story, right? All the ten plagues, God put his mighty hand to work, and eventually he did bring the people out. So what are the takeaways? Real simple, easy, practical takeaways. Uh, 
God delivered Israel out. The first one is this. God uses imperfect people in his work. Moses was not fit for the job, but God used him anyway. Does that make sense? I'm not fit for the job. Perhaps you aren't up for the task. We have to rely on God. Uh, next thing, God will help us to do his work. He will come alongside and help us. He will encourage us. He will equip us for his work. God will give you what you need. If you want to be in the praise band, God will give you what you need to do. If, you, if, that's, if that's where you feel like God would have you serve. Whatever it would be. If you want to be a leader in the, in the youth group, and we're going to be doing some of that in the, in the coming months, restructuring how we're doing things, especially in Sunday school. Next thing, God will provide others to help us in his work, which is super encouraging. God's plan is, is rarely, if ever, that we do it alone, Lone Ranger style. God wants us to have others to help us. And then finally, uh, we can have confidence in who God is and what he has promised. God had a plan for Moses, and God came through. I submit this to you. God has a plan for you, and he'll come, he'll come through. When things get crazy, self-doubt, don't think we can do it, God will come through for us. So that's it. God can use the useless.